investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here on this 28th day, Thursday, December. We're looking at the Dow 44, S&P's up five. I'm looking at the uh, E-mini, which the uh, E-mini is down $1.50 at 48.32. Look at how important this. You remember yesterday we were talking about during my show, I said we've got to watch closely. This 200-period moving average becomes a magnet, could hit it many times, and finally it hit it, and then it spiked higher. And it went to a peak F. And look at this. This is something for those of you who trade futures. Just know that if you can learn this pattern, it can save you a ton of money. When there's a very, after the four o'clock bell, uh, if there's a rally and then it just kind of stalled, it can go into a trading range for hours. In this case, it was a trading range between the high of 4840 uh, four, and a low of 4838. Eight, I think it was, yep, 38. I mean, come on, uh, between a four and a six point trading range, and it stays that way all the way until it broke down at um, just before four o'clock this morning, early uh, this morning, uh, Eastern time. And then look what happens as it gets closer and closer to this orange 200 period moving average, it becomes, it loses the, the repellent, the propellant uh, um aspect and it becomes more a magnet and as it gets closer click it just grabs it and it holds it it grabs it and holds it grabs it and holds look how many times it is how important is this not at all when you're up there but really important as you get closer and here it is again so this 4830 level is like a magnet watch it all day that's the thing to watch monitor very closely now let's go through a couple of things you see this this arch formation that goes from an H like this. So I'm always all about straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation, and a mix. In this case, it's a straight line down, and then it makes an arch formation called the dreaded H because if it takes out this left side low, decisively it can go one to one from the arch high, usually if it fails at a peak A or a B, and go double to the downside. And if it's a, a green reverse Y formation, if it takes out the left side high, you can go quite a bit high. So just keep that in mind. And now have a look at this. Questions keep coming in. Uh, is, is Microsoft going to all-time highs? What's happening with Microsoft? Well, look, at, look what's happened with Microsoft. Um, MSFT. It ran all the way to 384.30 on the 29th of November. That's exactly a, a month ago. Then it pulled back sharply, and then it created an arch formation. What is this? An arch formation right here. Held the left side low, and then the lowercase h can become a lowercase m and frustrate the heck out of you as I think it's going to break one way or the other. No. This rectangle formation is so powerful that it can remain there, even a stock as going to all-time highs just a month ago at 384, pulling back to the three um, to the low 360s, and now just trading at 374. How on earth could this go sideways for so long? Well, it can. It can because it's had a spectacular move going from the low 300s to the 380s. I should just mention for clarification, we, we are long from 338. We've got a core position. We've taken little bits off on each of the balances, um, and we're waiting for another one. I don't think it's going to do that right now because this lowercase h is going to a lowercase m, and it will go remain in the rectangle formation longer than your uh, uh, patience. What it needs to do is decisively close above this peak C right here, that's 377.64. I'd say 378.50 or higher. It says, yeah, that says good chance now I could at least attempt a rally to the 384 level, all-time high. But that's what it needs to break this H to M pattern. Meantime, if it starts to trade under 369, just be careful because the second arch could very much determine 
whether or not and how much it's going to take out this left side low of 362.90. So that is Microsoft. See the monthly chart stalling. Magni is still good. Stochastic still good at 85%. On balance volumes pull back. Nine is over the 14 price. It's over the nine, but it's getting closer and closer to tackling that support level. But it is. And in fact, what I like to do is the same sort of thing here. I drew in the rectangle. I'm drawing it in right here and saying, OK, show me what you got, Microsoft, because you've had a spectacular move. And now money is flowing out of some of these magnificent seven into the I the area of the IWM, not necessarily just the IWM, but into the smaller caps. Look, there's a lowercase h that went to a lowercase m with a, a third h pattern, arch formation. Took a, Each one went fractionally lower. So trough A, trough B, trough C. <laughs> We've got a trough D right now. This is a gray leg A. The MACD is finding the monthly chart. We've got a day, two days to go today and tomorrow for the month to finish. And if it does, that MACD will finally have crossed positive. The stochastic is mm, just okay at 40%, not good. On balance volume is improving, and the 9 is still way under the 14 and needs to close above it. But it is saying finally you're seeing some money flow into this area that was so weak. And look at this pattern. You can see it much clearer now uh, if I show it to you in the, the long. But the narrow rectangle, and I treated the 200 period moving average as a midpoint line, and we had the whole, uh, you know, just a panoply of, of just a different assessments and ideas based on this um, sine wave going up and down and up and down. This is the strongest move that it's had to the upside since they'd moved from, uh, from 162.78 back in June of 22, which screamed up to the uh, 199s. And so many times it went to 199, 198. Was that 200 or 199? It was 201.99. And that was the high that was made back in, was that the end of July? No, that was August, the week of the 19th of August. And finally, you've got a leg C. This leg C went to a lower low. So this is an engulfing candle. If you treat it as one leg to the upside, like one candle, uh, going from the 162.78 low of June to the Russell 2000s high of 200 and call it 202, that was in August, this is engulfing it. So this is a very positive move. And the stochastic is at 91% and looks to me like it could go a little bit to the flat side rather than to turn down sharply and go under 80%. So that says this is an area to keep monitoring because it's the first time that you've seen some kind of follow through um, certainly on a monthly basis and definitely on a weekly basis. And you got a little doji candle from yesterday. And right now it says mm, slightly overbought, like so many of the other indices. Now let's just do that at this very moment. Let's go. So here we go. Because uh, if someone, uh, maybe if you've got Trade Station, if someone out there is looking at the equal weight, I just can't, I did a whole bunch of work a long time ago, and then I reviewed it just recently, the equal weight, uh, different indices, and I can't just I can't find the uh, actual symbol for trade station. Um, uh, Z says Dow Jones Industrial 37729. A high today has met practice 37775 target. Now in Chapman Wave leg T on the Dow Jones. Yeah, bounce is below this short kick. I'll talk about that in a moment. I'll be right back. Dow's up two uh, S up six. As a chap, I can give you some hour. Do you short or not? If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, so we're back and we're looking at a very interesting situation. So um, what I like to do is to, when I'm getting to the refinement area where I'm saying, okay, I'm... Everything about what I'm looking at says visually we're overbought, but are we technically overbought? And that's where I have to assess and say, well, this is good, this is bad, whatever it is. And let's just do this right now. And then what I do is I grab a smaller time frame because that's it's, it's like, um, you know, speedboat can turn around a lot quicker than than a ship. That's all it is to it. A super tanker takes forever. And the United States economy is a super tanker. 72, 94, uh, 72, 94. Yeah, and as a super tanker, it means that by the time you recognize that it's turned, it's already way, way in the distance. So let's just talk about it as if we are microcosming and macro causing so here we go so we're looking at the the dow has gone so i have a, a technique and i have webinars that if you're a subscriber you know that you've got these webinars um, many times i've had webinars based on the rectangle formation i call it the large rectangle the small rectangle let me just see if i can pop this up right now there it is so essentially it looks like this the characteristics of a rectangle formation you can get the long, narrow rectangle. I have a whole series of, of, of rules that go with this. And the large rectangle, which could turn into a cup formation or an arch formation. There are a whole bunch of things that go with this. What are we looking at here? We're looking at the rule that says if after the flagpole high, there's a sharp pullback, and immediately you start to see whatever price you're following make higher highs and higher lows. It doesn't have to be higher lows, but essentially call it higher lows. Um, mostly it's higher highs, it can rally to a peak D, 
fourth highest peak in that time frame. I used to always say in a shorter time frame, but for a year and a half now, we've seen so many go in that time frame to just under, right on or just above the previous high. And then you've got to monitor it based on a halfway marker. That is a halfway, uh, let me just draw this in right now. <clears throat> That would be the halfway, I'm doing it visually right there. That would be about the halfway marker. Um, if that gets broken at any point in the following number of bars, that's very negative. If it holds, you can stay in the sideways uh, trading range for a while. So here's the S&P in leg E. Here's the Dow in leg E. Here's the QQQ. It's already broken out very significantly. So this is a C, that's a D. So many of them made their Ds in Chapman Wave methodology. D is your objective, at least a D. In a buy mode, we can go E, F, and even G. But D is really your objective. And here you go, up a uh, down arrow, up arrow, and let's count, let's count the waves. What was, it? what was the poetry there? What was that? Let me count the waves. Um, a, B. I think that that's going to turn into a C. Uh, you got 1132, 1134. Now, that's a C and that's a D. We're in leg D. So all of them, based on the Chapman methodology, are at D or E, which says at that particular point, be careful, because that's when you can get a turnaround. You don't have to, but that's where your yellow light flashes and says, all right, just be a little careful. So we've got the, and I want to do the IWM. IWM. As you do, this is way different. This, in fact, is look at that peak A, peak B, peak B went right above that D. <clears throat> That's an E. I want to double check that I'm calling it an E. It looks to me like it's a fractional higher high. 045, 0456. So this is C. So this says that the um, <laughs> interesting. This says that the. We'll put that in there. IWM could be EF. But I'm going to call it. There's no reason why this shouldn't be a buy mode. Uh, it's very close. You're going to have one little pop up to go to the D. Okay. So what would I do in this particular instance? And this is exactly what I was saying to subscribers this morning and yesterday, that I'm getting really close to at least implementing some kind of a short position. At this particular point, it would have to be timing for a turnaround. But it would also be some kind of insurance because we've got no insurance. We've only got long positions. Now, what would I do? Number one is if I was just dealing with, and the question was the Dow. So let's go to the Dow, INDU. What would I do? Well, I don't see anything here that says to me, uh oh, got to get aggressive. You got to go two times long, DXD or the uh, SDOW, three times, three, two times short or three times short. I don't see that yet, just yet. In fact, as insurance, probably I would say right here, since we are long the diamonds and we're long the UDOW three times long, um, I would only, I would only treat it as a kind of insurance. I'd maybe start a position in the DOG, which is one to one short. So you're really not going to make very much. It's just kind of an insurance policy. Look, DOG. Uh, going down, like, let's go to the troughs. Uh, trough A, trough B, trough C, trough D. Trough A, trough B, trough C, leg D. Yeah, so this is saying to me, um, the, the, the on-balance volume is really close to a bounce. The stochastics come off its low at 7.32, but it's single digits. The MACD histogram starting to improve. So it says to me there's a chance that we are really close to some kind of a rebound. But look at this, from 29.67, 30 is the, is the pink, nine period moving average in the DOG. Um, oh, I haven't, uh, we did that once, 31.32, and then we uh, got stopped out. That was quite a while ago. It was back in early December. <clears throat> and, and look, the black 14 period exponential moving average of 32.25, that's way up. To get this to turn around significantly, You've got to have, and I'm going back to this. I know it's a bit of a pain, but I have to do it. If I can actually find it. Why is it up there? Right here. 
Let me see if I'm clicking on the right button. Yep, there it is. And I said, I'm only putting this very faintly. I don't have any real sign of dark news cloud cover. There's just, I mean, you know, Marcus loved to climb a wall of worry. But every once and again, there, there is no th nothing to worry about. That's when you've got to worry. But what are you worrying about? It's really tough. Interest rates are down at the lows. Dollar, down at the lows. Um, politically, what have we got? We've got the end of the year coming to the beginning of the year. This is going to be a really interesting year politically. Don't want to get into that right now, but there will be time. We'll have no choice. So all I can say is something's going to come out of there. Could it be geopolitical? Absolutely, it could be geopolitical. Could it be the the the, the, the uh, Suez Canal? Um, yeah, could, could that be shut down? Yeah, a whole bunch of things could happen. They haven't happened yet. So all I'm going to say is I would probably do this to be as you could use timing. Timing says either later today or tomorrow in preparation of some kind of selling that comes in early in, the, in January, the first week or two. Um, you could start to take a position. I, I don't want to rush this. I, I want to go to because your question is a question that I've been asked a lot. And I have asked myself almost every day, every hour of every day for the last two weeks, are we getting closer to a pullback? What kind of pullback? Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV.
Hi folks, so we were looking at the rectangle formation. What was my expression? A long, narrow rectangle formation will last a lot longer than your patience and probably a lot longer than your money because look, it's just stayed in this range. And this is a one minute chart and it goes all the way from uh, 9.30 this morning to where we are now. That's 10.30, that's 60 bars. And yet we stuck in this range just about to test the upper part of that range. On balance volume says, hey, we'll be a little careful here because it, unless it breaks to the upside sharply, uh, it could stall right here. So, okay. So let me just get back to the story. And the story is, and, and what I said to uh, John who asked the question, um, uh, who asked the question about the, about the Dow, there, there are three things that I would do right now. One is, as insurance, did I type that in the wrong place? I did. As insurance, that's two separate things. If it's timing, a timing model, I don't, I don't have anything right now other than my my one indicator that says this is overbought and there should be a pullback. But that pullback could be a hundred points, two hundred points, just a pullback. It could be five hundred points, it could be seven hundred points. That doesn't give you the indication of how deep it is. Other things do. So all it says is we are really close to maybe an early January pullback. That's number one. Number two is um, that weekly chart, especially since we're already Thursday and we're above the doji candle of last week in a spectacular move that's gone from the 32327 uh, 32, level straight up to um, single leg to this leg where we are right now in the weekly chart, the way it's the way it's acted with the stochastic flat and the MACD still expanding, it says you can get a pullback of even a third. You can go all the way down to 36,200 and still be in a really strong buy mode. And the monthly chart, same thing. So all I'm saying is I don't get anything right now than just visually looking and say, oh, man, that looks very overboard. Well, looking overboard, the stock doesn't know it's overboard. It's just doing what it's doing. It's me that's saying, hey, you look overboard. That doesn't mean to say it's overboard. It just looks overboard. The one indicator that says it is overboard is the unbalanced volume. The stochastic, though, is at 92%. So what I had said is I would look at a put position for the third week of January. So there's a monthly put position in the diamonds for the 19th of, it's a Friday the 19th. That's, that's the second part of this whole thing. The third is the semiconductors are starting to slow down on the upside. I've still got this as a leg E. If you do a measured move from the, the high that was made about nine sessions ago, let's just go to that. That was the session of December the 15th. Um, look, guess your vertical line. The MACD was good. The stochastic was very strong in the 90, I think it was 90. 4% area. On balance volume was a little bit overbought and it pulled back. Relative strength, a little gray line. This is the daily chart on the left. We're starting to pull back and it's much weaker now than it was. So that's a bit of a clue right there, relative strength. But I'm looking at this and I'm suggesting, and let's go to the monthly, sorry, let's go to the 120 minute chart. Remember, all of them had already gone to a D except for the Qs. So this is at a peak F right here. This is the SW, SMHs, Semiconductor, Market Vector Semiconductor ETF. And look at this. We've got an A. We've got a B. We've got a C. We've got a D. But we haven't yet got a leg E. And that's just saying on the 120-minute chart, that we are very, very close to a digestive phase. A digestive phase says, you remember, we had this right here for this very ugly candle. We were short th that morning, and then it plunged. We were short because we were long the SOXS, and we, we had nice gains, and we got out of it, and then it started to gap up and move higher. And that's just saying that within the context of now I could do something else. Look, here we go. Left side, right side, price, time match. Here we go, right there. That's the low right there. So that's my bar that says, if I use the plumb line right here, this is my plumb line. 
the midpoint that I'm anticipating the same number of bars to the right will get us back to where we were. Then let's do this. Click. And you can see it's already taken it out. Make that green. So the only way I can see right now for me to have confidence and just not have it as insurance saying, look, we could, in insurance you say, I, I might not get broken into, and I'd be very pleased not to be broken into because it's always a lot more costly than whatever the insurance pays out and very cumbersome and very, it just, it's un, very unpleasant. But if, I mean, I have a problem, I've got insurance, and that's why you have insurance. But you, you don't really want to use the insurance, but it's there. So let me look at this right here. So that's right there is the one-to-one -to, -one to, the, to the right side. We've already just modestly taken it out. And the um, MACD's flat, stochastics at 83% good. The uh, Let me just do this here. The 9 is still over the 14. I don't even have a sign here in the SMHs, the semis, to say, um, whoa, sharp pullback coming. I do have a sign that says within this cup formation, the technicals here are still just as strong as they were before. Therefore, any pullback should hold. And here's the sign that it says the green nine period moving average, which is at 173.50. And where are we now? We're at 176.62. Three points, that's not even 2%, right? So all I can say is, I don't want to get in front of the train. And there's the, there's a fourth thing that you can do and just say, you know what? If the Dow pulls back 230 points on a closing basis, preferably a closing basis, but it could even be intraday from here. It hasn't had moves like this before, maybe once or twice in the last uh, a month and a half. I want to start a short position. And I could do a sh very aggressive short position by going three times short the SDOW with a very tight stop and just let it run. And there's, and then it'll run up because it's buying the short position on the long side. So you can use a trading stop and just say, hey, take me out. If you don't take me out and keep moving higher, I'm happy with that. But it is an anticipation of something that on a purely technical level, um, I, I just certainly in the SMHs. Now, let, let me do something else. Because believe me, what you're asking, the question that you're asking is a question a lot of us are asking. When do we pull back? Is it the first week of January? Does the buying, does the selling, which is holding off until the beginning of January, immediately, is this one of those times, January the 14th, I think it was? Is it January the 14th? Yeah. In 2000 was the top for the Dow. Three months later was the SMHs and the, and the, and the s and We've seen that often. Tops roll sequentially. Bottoms come uniformly at the bottom. I've always said that if you look at all the V-shaped bottoms, they're right there within sync, within, they're within a day or two of one another. Tops can unfold because they are different characters. It's a different character. There isn't that hysterical selling climax. There are, there are buying climaxes based on tactics. I'll be back in a moment trying to get some out of coaches. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So everything that we're doing here in the one-minute chart or the five-minute chart in the, or the ten-minute chart really is like a daily, weekly, monthly chart. And look what's happened. You've gone green in the nine period moving average in the five minute chart. You've got that already in the one minute chart and you've got it in the 10 minute chart. And that just says, if you want to fight the tape, to me, this is the tape, um, then anticipate that you aren't going to go leg C to a peak C and then just a modest D, at least in the five minute chart, which would be maybe a leg B extension or a C in the, in the 10 minute chart. But until it really takes a dive and breaks this 200 period moving average of 4834, it's at 4837 right now, and then slams through 30, uh, 4831, so far the bias has been to see what we've seen all month, uh, six weeks actually, um, where there's buying of every dip, all right? So that you, you want to fight the tape, you've got to do it with a methodology. So as I'm looking at it right now, and you remember what we said about the Microsoft uh, position sideways until it changes, and that, that's already, um, now we're talking about a month, right? So these things can last a lot longer than your patience. So I gave you four particular aspects that I'm looking at here, or, or let's call it analyses. And what am I waiting for? I'm waiting for the clue, which will be the SMHs, to take a dive under 170 in January. And that's at 176.62. If it closes under 170 on the daily chart, that's going to suggest to me quite strongly that the way that the technicals deteriorate, if they do, in the weekly chart is going to give me clues for the rest of January. So you need the shorter term to be able to get to the more intermediate term. But at this particular point, even though my eyes is whoa, ho, 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 we are so close to turning down. Look, the candles are getting a little bit smaller. Yeah, you've got one little pop to the upside, but basically it's a struggle. You've had your major thrust to the upside, and the weekly chart is a little different. This is already a leg C uh, in the weekly, as opposed to the Dow and all the others that are still in a leg A. Um, it's worked harder, so this would be the clue. So that for right now, on a very short-term basis, um, the SMHs up 68 cents. If they close, I don't want to intraday stuff. If it closes at 176.54 right now and go to the 100 and for the 120 minute chart, let me just double check here. I think that might. Uh, 
175, 20, uh, 176.75, and today's high is 176.73. Another three cents, and it extends above that. So this is already double topish right now. Uh, just I'm talking about the 120 minute chart, uh, but all the technicals are still good. So all I'm saying is, if you want a clue, I'd rather be late than early. Mm. And even though I'm personally with my subscribers, we might anticipate something in the in in this in these indices by tomorrow. That's an anticipation with a very tight stop, saying we know exactly what we're doing. Don't even touch it if you're even hesitant. It's only for those people who are considering that they want to play some downside with the potential that over the long weekend, it's too late to do anything because. Tuesday, we just gapped down huge. I don't even know if it's going to happen. I'm saying that's a scenario. If you want to entertain that scenario, there are ways to do that. But you could also suddenly have a gap to the upside. I think it's less likely of a huge gap to the upside. You can have a move to the upside, but not a huge gap to the upside at this particular point as things stand right now. So your risk is one of the percentages and your gains are very quick multiples of that percentage if you're right. So it's, yes, of course, it's a gamble, but it's a gamble that you are prepared to do under the conditions, very strict conditions. And here's what we're looking at. Look, NVIDIA stuck in a trading range. It's in a, at, a, at a, it made a peak B at 505.48. All-time highs very rarely fail at a peak B in the daily chart. It's almost a DEF or something like that. So now you've got another high underneath it, which is already at a peak C. I suspect that if we do anything within the next day or two, we might just pop over 504.33 and stick between 505.48 and 504.33, somewhere in there for leg D, and then we'll see what happens uh, starting next week. But that weekly chart... Um, at this particular point, he's saying, <clears throat> look at that in tap wave inside track repellent zone. And it's been a repellent zone for quite some time. Respect it, but at the same time, um, know that you are right there. You're bumping up against the door that says, I might break to the upside. I haven't yet. And because of that, I'm just saying, this is a clue to say, it's struggling a little bit. The semis have had a fantastic move to the upside um, over the last year since since the 108.12 low that was made in August of 2022. Uh, it's three times higher, more than that, at 497.68. And um, it's just getting a little tired. So because of that, I'm saying, if you're prepared, I mean, I've spent a lot of time talking about something that the evidence at this particular point until we see the uh, NVIDIA, which has already stalled and gone kind of sideways for a while, um, trading can't just be a one-time thing. It's got to be trading in the four, below this red candle right here, the candle of the 20th of December, uh, 480.98. It has to be trading in 479. So that's almost 20 points lower. If it starts to trade 20 points lower, without taking out 507 as an all-time high, um, then I'm saying, oh, okay, you need NVIDIA. You need some others, advanced micro devices. Uh, laying D to the, to the upside, all-time high, 164, back in November of 2021. Here it is at 149. That's quite a way to go. So that just says it gives you room in 2024 to be moving higher. Very short term, once again, nothing wrong yet. But that's, a, that's when you want to be looking at and saying, well, what would it take for this to turn down? And what it would take would be some kind of, it's a 149, it's the same candle, that candle of that Wednesday, the 20th of December, that low of 135.37, uh, a close under that says, whoops, shorter term change, change of trend. And that means the weekly chart will finally digest. So it's a big ask. And all I can say is that, I don't have anything right now. I don't. I haven't wanted to step in front of this chain. We still only have long positions, and um, I just have to let them play out. And we're mixed. We're all over the show in terms of diversity, 
And all right, I just want you to do this. I had a question with GDX. Could you just do the GDX, please? Yeah, the GDX trading right now at uh, 31.80, down 18 cents. That whole 32 to 33 area um, has been a very strong resistance for quite some time. So as I see it, this is good action. It's not great action. It's just good action. What would be great action, and, you know, I've got a plus sign, and the stochastics at 83 in the weekly, and the MACD is good, nines over. I really don't have a choice. I have to put an up arrow. This is in a buy mode, and it should go to higher highs. It should test the high 32s, low 33s over the next week or two. So let's just put that in. There you go. Okay, but the monthly chart is still just kind of sideways. And I'll be back. Dow's up 82, SB's up 11. Hope you like it. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. 
Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So BBAI, Big Bear dot AI holding, uh, uses AI for scaling and machine learning. Really good move up 10% today, up 22 cents at 2.33. It broke that 200 period moving average resistance. And this is an overlapping peak A, uh, B right there, and a B right there. So this is a C, this is very powerful. And that just says that the stochastic at 80%, MACD, good, everything's good. The, the blue nine period moving on balance volume, I'm sorry, is a little overbought. So it could have a pullback, but this does look like 248 to 252 will be the next move to the upside. Where if it's in leg C, that's very positive. If it pulls back and does it in leg D, it's just getting a little tired. Great move for the last four sessions. Yes. Uh, congratulations, uh, Dan. Uh, so just as I'm about to wrap up, I, I'm hoping everything works out for a, a session tomorrow. But uh, in the meantime, I wish everyone a happy, a wonderful, wonderful new year and a healthy new year and a successful one. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes. And in the meantime, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And um, got to watch this very closely. Are we getting a little toppy? Yeah, I think we're getting a little toppy. Do we pull back in January?